Hello, my name is Benjamin Hart. I'm an American attorney and the managing director of Integrity Legal here in Bangkok, Thailand. You know, we constantly hear the term inflation. It's, it's a word that it's almost ubiquitous when you're listening to any kind of economic discussion out there, you know, period, regardless of the country. Inflation, it just seems like a constant. That said, deflation is just kind of overlooked. What's, what's, the, um, what's the saying? Success has a thousand fathers and defeat is an orphan. You know, it's like inflation has a thousand fathers or a thousand pundits in the, in the economic space, in the, in the sort of punditry world. Meanwhile, deflation is an orphan. It's never really talked about. It's not fully understood, in my opinion. I'm not claiming to be an expert in all of this stuff, just more or less kind of an interested dabbler who has his own common sense. That said, I thought of making this video after reading a recent article from the Thai Examiner. That's thaiexaminer.com. Article is titled, Sea Change in U.S. Markets Sees Bot Rise Sharply, Ailing Thai Economy Still Ekes Out Tepid Growth. You know, and first off to the, to the headline there, Tepid, or I heard Chris Hedges the other day on YouTube call it tepid. I, I've only ever seen that in print. Right? And every time I've heard it spoken, it's been tepid. But maybe in my part of the country, that's what they called it. Might be my accent. I don't know. In any event, this notion of like slow growth. Well, one, there's a big hunk of Thailand's economy that's just not, it, you're not able to put a metric on it the way that bankers want to. GDP is entirely a function of bank credit. So, when we see GDP numbers, all we're seeing is the sort of formal economy, if you will. Meanwhile, anybody who's ever been to Thailand knows the informal economy is where the, is the engine, if you will, the economic dynamism of this nation. I mean, that, that, that's pretty much a foregone conclusion at this point. That said, quoting directly, meanwhile, Governor Sethaput, that's the governor of the Bank of Thailand, I believe, quoting further, has dismissed any concerns about deflation. The central banker pointed out that even with lower prices in some areas, consumers continued spend, still continued spending. Well, yeah, they would. If prices go down, of course they would. Now, the, here's the dichotomy here. There's two, in my mind, and don't take this as academic gospel, but there's two kinds of, infl of deflation. There's the prices of things going down because we learn better techniques of building and making certain goods or harvesting certain agricultural products, whatever. For example, you know, the first car probably cost a lot of money in, in adjusted terms because it was probably all handmade and it was very difficult, you know, to put it all together. But once the assembly line was created and we found new and efficient ways of making cars, cars became affordable for everyone. It's just sort of the nature of the beast. That's deflation. That's price deflation, the price of things going down. Things getting cheaper because we're becoming better at producing them, basically. Now, what's interesting to me is there's been almost a hijacking, to my mind, of economic thought. Because if you go back into the 19th century, especially in the United States, and a good book for that, I think it's back here on my bookshelf, Tragedy and Hope by Carol Quigley, which is a tome of a, of a, of a read uh, regarding history, especially history of the West, the... But they get into, he gets into the real nuts and bolts of things. And he talks about how in the 19th century, we saw tremendous deflation because we saw all kinds of economic innovation that resulted in things costing less. But here's the problem with deflation. The added value to the consumer gained by the lower price for the same good cannot be taxed by the government. That's the, in, that's the problem. How do you... How do you strip off any wealth as the government, as a taxing agent? How do you strip any wealth off of something falling in price? How do you, so like, what am I talking about here? Let's say a can of paint on day whatever, 1815, cost a dollar, which is some fortune kind of money in that time. And I'm just making things up right now. But then five years later, due to better technology, better techniques, economies of scale, you can now buy that can of paint for five cents, okay? Again, just a total hypothetical. How do you tax the savings? You can't. That's why certain authorities don't like deflation fundamentally. Now, there's another type of deflation where everything sort of comes apart, bank credit dries up, and demand dies. Demand for goods and services, etc. Now, that leads to things like the Great Depression, where you have Basically, you know, people who want to work and do things not able to do it 
because the demand isn't there because it's just deflated out because you know because there's been a crash or people have withdrawn their capital from the market out of fear basically that's a different thing in my mind the but again the notion that deflation is in and of itself bad is one of these misconceptions that really i think has undermined clear thinking in terms of economics both in the West, and I think you could say here in Thailand. Meanwhile, in many ways, inflation is a hidden tax because you can, you can strip the wealth off of people, again, using things like the Cantillon effect and stuff like that, where especially if you have sort of an oligarchic class that can kind of get to the money. We have this problem in the United States. They have free access to the newly printed money. They get first dibs on it. They go out and use it to buy hard assets, and, and they don't feel the effect of the inflation yet but then down the line, the other people do. In a sense, it, it really is a hidden tax, if you will, in a lot of different ways. And it can be quantified, so therefore it can be taxed. Again, when asset prices go up, capital gains tax can be imposed, for example. So at the end of the day, the thing to keep in mind is deflation is not the boogeyman that people make it out to be.